Hi everyone, my name is Natasha from Love's Cure Ministries. Thank you for joining me for a new video for my Did You Know series, where we talk about amazing facts that were first spoken of in scripture and are being discovered and rediscovered in modern times. Today we'll be discussing the proof of the 12 vortices on earth that is described in Job chapter 38, where God reveals his omnipotence to Job. I have some great information and scripture for you regarding this, so let's get started. First, what is a vortex? A vortex is a mass of whirling fluid or air, especially a whirlpool or whirlwind. The plural form is known as vortices. There are 12 vortices on Earth that have been discovered throughout different times in history and are individually known as a vile vortex. Scotland native writer and biologist Ivan T. Sanderson asserts that 12 vortices, famously the Bermuda Triangle, are situated along particular lines of latitude. Five of the vortices are on the same latitude to the south of the equator and five are on the same latitude to the north. The other two are the North and South Poles. Now, although he had his own strange ideas about these unusual locations, some raise the argument of the phenomenons being linked to subtle matter or electromagnetic aberration or force. It has also been cited as anti-gravity on the world grid. It is well known that there is a mysticism that often surrounds events that cannot be explained in the natural. For example, in ancient times, stories arose from Greek mythology to Eastern philosophy to explain anomalies due to the lack of modern elements we have today to help us understand what would have been considered phenomenons. Unfortunately, this is an ongoing tradition that is still prevalent today. It removes the acknowledgement of the glory of God. As tradition gives way to pagan gods and rituals and such to pay homage to demonic entities or fallen angels that we know are condemned to Gehenna or hell, God's truth continuously confirms and reconfirms spiritually, physically, figuratively, and literally. With the masses nowadays not having any sense of the existence of God or God's signature in creation, we must remember that if we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. As per the following verse, we see this holds true. In James chapter 4 verse 8, it says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. This is a roadblock for those who do not know him because in their hearts, they love their sin more than God. For those of us who love God with our whole hearts, mind, and soul, he has allowed the Holy Spirit to give us revelation of many things, including his spiritual presence in the world around us. God has allowed us to see his goodness and glory in everything that he created and has given authority to discover the wonders of his creativity. Why don't we take a look at the 12 vortices that were set in place by God in the beginning? Bermuda Triangle. This is the best known of the vile vortices. Algeria Megaliths. This is located in North Africa. Indus Valley located in the city of Mohenjo-daro, Pakistan. The Dragon's Triangle, south of Japan. Hamakulia Volcano, Hawaii. South Atlantic Anomaly, east of Rio de Janeiro. Great Zimbabwe, located in Africa. Warrington Basin, the Loyalty Islands, Easter Island Megaliths, the North Pole, 
and the South Pole. The vortices are well known to be points around the world in which voyagers can use uh, as locations to pinpoint a route to their destinations. In past times, it was used as a GPS, so to speak, to navigate around the world. Now that we've explored the locations, let's read in scripture where God reveals details of how he established the foundations and constructed the earth. In Job chapter 38 verses 1 through 11, the Lord reveals his omnipotence to Job. I encourage you to read that entire chapter. As a matter of fact, the book of Job in its entirety is an eye-opening experience. But for today, for our topic, I'll be highlighting just a few verses. And it reads, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have an understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea? with doors, when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, this far you may come, but no farther, and here your proud waves must stop. If you read the entire chapter of Job 38, it reveals the intricacies of God's hand on the earth. However, in verses 5 and 6, you can see that there specifically it talks about the line struck upon the earth, known to us as the equator. And it says the foundations of the earth were fastened. It's no coincidence that the 12 vortices are situated along particular lines of latitude Five of the vortices are on the same latitude to the south of the equator, and five are on the same latitude to the north. The other two are, as we know, the north and south poles, as stated earlier. They are the foundations that are referenced in this verse. In Job chapter 38, verse 1, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. We read earlier that a vortex is a mass of whirling fluid or air, especially a whirlpool or whirlwind. But why 12? What is the significance of this number in the Bible? Did you know that 12 can be found in 187 places in God's word? Revelation alone has 22 occurrences of the number. The meaning of 12, which is considered a perfect number, is that it symbolizes God's power and authority, as well as serving as a perfect governmental foundation. It can also symbolize completeness or the nation of Israel as a whole. For example, Jacob or Israel had 12 sons, each of which represented a tribe begun by a prince for 12 princes total. Ishmael, who was born to Abraham through Hagar, also had 12 princes. God specified that 12 unleavened cakes of bread be placed every week in the temple with frankincense next to each of the two piles that were to be made. The Levi priests were commanded to change the bread every Sabbath day as mentioned in Leviticus chapter 24. Christ also called and chose 12 men to bear witness to what he did and to spread the good news of the gospel to the entire world. After he was raised from the dead, Jesus told the 11 disciples, because Judas had killed himself, 
that God had given him all power and authority in both earth and heaven, which is God's defined authority, as mentioned in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, which is 144,000 in total, will receive salvation during the end times great tribulation. That's mentioned in Revelation chapter 7. Christ's bride in Revelation chapter 12, which is the church, wears a crown containing 12 stars. The new Jerusalem, which is made in heaven and brought to the earth by God himself, contains 12 gates made of pearl, which are each manned by an angel. Over each gate will be one of the names of Israel's 12 tribes. The walls are 144 cubits high, which is 12 multiplied by itself. This is mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 verses 16 and 17 with the city itself being 12,000 furlongs square. There are 12 names in the Bible that have only two letters. That's mentioned as, and I apologize if I'm not saying this correctly, but there's A, R, Ed, Er, Ear, No, Og, An, Pe, So, Er, and Uz. This is mentioned in Joshua chapter 7 verse 2, Numbers 21 verse 15, Joshua 22 and 34, Genesis 38 and 3, 1 Chronicles 7 and 12, Jeremiah 46 and 25, Numbers 21 and 33, Numbers 16 and 11, Psalm 119 and 129, 2 Kings 17 and 4, Genesis 11 and 28, and Genesis chapter 10, verse 23. The 12 patriarchs from and including Shem, which is one of Noah's sons saved in the ark, to Jacob, Aproxad, Salah, Heber, Peleg, Ruyu, Surug, Nahor, Terah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Solomon appointed 12 officers over Israel. The number 12 is also related to anointed service. 12 people are specially noted in scripture as being anointed for a unique task or responsibility. They are Aaron and his four sons to serve as Levitical priests, as mentioned in Exodus chapter 29 verses 7 through 9, and Saul, as mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and 1, David, 1 Samuel 16 and 13, and Solomon, 1 Kings chapter 1 verse 39. They were all to serve as kings over a united Israel. Then we also have David's son Absalom, and then we have uh, three remaining that were specially anointed, which were King Jehu of Israel, Kings Johash, and also Jehoaz of Judah. These are all mentioned in 2 Kings uh, chapters 9 through chapters 23. Here's another amazing fact. The scripture's first recording of the words of Jesus occurred when he was 12 years old. That's mentioned in Luke chapter 2 verse 42. Also, the high priest's breastplate, also called the breastplate of decision, had 12 stones embedded in it. Each stone represented a tribe of Israel. Of all of the numbers that are found in scripture, 12, along with the numbers 3, 4, 7, and 10, are undoubtedly and unmistakably used in a symbolic fashion in God's word. From the Bible, we know that time and time again, God confirms his word. There is always a witness, a testimony to confirm what was, what is, and what will always be. Here in scripture and in our modern day, we can see that no matter what ideologies, fables, or conspiracies arise, we have yet another piece of evidence of our God's glory and omnipotence upon the earth. 
These 12 vortices, like the 12 tribes of Israel, is a building block or cornerstone of the ever-evolving levels of the magnitude of our Father's creativity and grace. How great is our God, truly. You know, I, I am in awe of His majesty and His word. It is an everlasting example of his promises and how he reminds us of that every day when we wake up. As he spoke in Job chapter 38 and 12, he says he, he commands the morning, you know, hallelujah, he commands the morning. And um, it's just, it's always fun and it's always mind blowing when you come across something and you're able to connect it to scripture and just have validation after validation and confirmation after confirmation and it's just a reminder of how good God is it's a reminder of the fact that he is always with us and he has placed his signature of love upon the earth he has given us each and everything that we will need to sustain ourselves to live and to be able to have more than enough to be able to discover all the wonderment of his creativity you know he's placed all of these things here for us to discover and to keep us occupied and to give us one more reason to glorify him you know it's funny that you know in the beginning i mentioned that you know people because they weren't able to fully understand these anomalies they came up with their uh stories or ideologies leading to their own understanding and even though some of these locations um, have ancient ruins on them and you know they're, they're they don't appear to be godly sites this video was made to show that before man tried to lay down their own figures of their own imagination before man tried to lay down their own foundations god had established the foundations of the earth and underneath all of those layers still resides the uh, the evidence of the science and mathematics behind God's creativity and how he used all of these things to uh, make measurement um, and to draw lines and, and hold up bars and open and close doors to give uh, certain specifications, if you will, for the earth to adhere to. And so this video is paying homage to what God has done and not what man has tried to build over it. You know, regardless, his hand is still there and it's everlasting to everlasting. And so in closing, I pray that you will be kept in the safety and guidance and wisdom of our God and King. May your eyes and ears always be open to the things of Him, living to a holy standard, which is obeying His word entirely, repenting daily, and having faith in our Messiah, believing in who He is and His finished work on the cross. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, bye friends.